Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and this is how you scan a pneumothorax. First, we're going to talk about which probe you should use for this examination. Your go-to probe should be the linear probe. This probe is great for superficial structures and will give you really good resolution of the pleural line. In a pinch, or if you're at the end of an EFAS exam, the curvilinear probe will definitely work. Now as far as where to actually place the probe on the patient, a lot of sources say to place a probe between the second and fourth rib space. I would suggest going a little bit lower, maybe between the fifth and eighth rib spaces. The reason for this is basically just anatomy. If you have a supine patient, air is going to layer more anterior, and the way the chest wall is built, more anterior is going to be a little bit lower um, on the patient, you know, closer to the feet than the second and fourth rib spaces. So I'd start a bit lower, maybe around five to eight. Now this is what you're actually going to see when you're looking at the ultrasound image. You're going to see some cross-sectional cuts of the ribs. Underneath that, you're going to see a rib shadow. Remember, sound doesn't penetrate bone very easily. The intercostal muscle in between the ribs, skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle above that. Then underneath the ribs, you'll see the VPPI, which stands for visceral parietal pleural interface, or you can just call it the pleura. What you're looking at here is you're looking at the relative motion between the parietal pleura, which is on the rib cage, and the visceral pleura, which is on the lung itself. You're not going to be able to tell the difference between the two. And in fact, in a pneumothorax, this white line is still going to be there. Really what you're looking for is, is this line, this VPPI or pleural line, moving back and forth, um, left to right on the screen? That's what you're looking for. Some people have called it, you know, ants marching, lung gliding, lung sliding. Really just, is it moving back and forth? Is it sliding? That's the most important thing. And this is what the lack of lung sliding looks like. Notice that white line is still there but it's not sliding, it's not moving back and forth left to right on the screen. You might have a little bit of up and down movement or anterior posterior movement, and that's just because the parietal pleura is attached to the ribs and the intercostal muscles when they kind of pinch, especially when a patient's in respiratory distress, it's going to cause that parietal pleura to move up and down. But in this patient, we do not see left to right uh, movement of the pleura. And so this patient, you'd be suspicious for a pneumothorax in the right clinical setting. If you find an area of the lung that does not have lung sliding, you can be pretty confident that there's no pneumothorax there. However, if you don't see lung sliding, it does not mean that they do have a pneumothorax. The reason for this is that there are a few other causes of the lack of lung sliding. COPD, asthma, subcutaneous emphysema, and apnea are some of the main reasons. You can also have adhesions and fibrosis, atelectasis, and if you intubate rather aggressively, and cause a right main stem intubation, the left side won't have any lung movement if the patient is paralyzed. Lung sliding is very sensitive for pneumothorax, meaning it's very good at ruling out a pneumothorax. If you see lung sliding in an area, there's no pneumothorax. However, it is not very specific. There is, however, an ultrasound finding that has been thought of to be very specific for a pneumothorax, and that's something called a lung point. And this is what a lung point looks like. Notice on the left side of the screen, you actually see lung sliding. That white line is moving back and forth, left to right on the screen. However, on the right side of the screen, you just see that white line by itself without any movement at all. This is a lung point, and this is thought to be very specific for our pneumothorax. This is what you're actually visualizing when you see a lung point on ultrasound. You're putting your linear transducer right at the border of the pneumothorax. So on one side, you're seeing lung sliding. On the other side, you're seeing no lung sliding. If you see this, think pneumothorax. There are a few caveats to that, however. At the border between the heart and the lung and the diaphragm and the lung, you might have a pseudo lung point. And basically what that is, is you're seeing lung sliding on one side and lack of lung sliding on another side. You just have to know where you're at on the body. If you're lateral at the 12 row space and you think you see a lung point, consider that that might be the diaphragm. And the same thing, if you're looking for a pneumothorax and you're looking at the anterior left kind of upper chest wall and you think you see a lung point there, think about it that there might actually be the heart and the lung coming into view. Now when I'm teaching the sonographic diagnosis of a pneumothorax, I'm almost invariably asked about M mode. You know the whole seashore and barcode sign. I found that this actually confuses me more than it helps me. And in fact there was a recent study that showed that when you used M mode to in the diagnosis of a pneumothorax, it actually decreased the accuracy of your scan. So I would suggest not using this. Now for a recap. You want to use your linear probe or whatever highest resolution probe you have. You want to scan in the most anterior portion of the chest wall. Lung sliding is sensitive, meaning it rules out a pneumothorax, and your lung point is going to be specific for a pneumothorax.